when you meditate, it's good to keep a large perspective because it's so easy to get frustrated. Here you are looking at the breath. And as John Lee says, just four concentrations. And you can't master them. The mind keeps slipping off. No matter how determined you are to stay with the breath, you suddenly find yourself someplace else. And a lot of times it doesn't seem that the meditation is heading in any particular direction, just kind of mucking around. You wonder, what does this have to do with the deathless? What does this have to do with anything related to true happiness? That's when it's time to step back and look at the larger perspective. And the big issue, of course, is your mind. Because no matter where you live, no matter, no matter where you go, you've got the mind right there. And if you can't keep it under any kind of control at all, you're living with something very dangerous. Because all kinds of things can happen to it. A slight chemical imbalance in the body and the mind gets really depressed. It can't seem to pull itself out of the depression. Or it starts hallucinating. All kinds of things the mind can do. All kinds of things the brain can do. And it's important to keep a distinction there, the mind and the brain. The brain is the, the physical organ. And the part of the mind we're interested in is just basic awareness. And we use the organ to think. But if the organ is damaged in any way, out of balance in any way, our thoughts can become our enemies. What are you going to do then? If you have the mindfulness to be able to pull yourself out of your thought worlds, then you're safe. And if you have the mindfulness to pull yourself out of anything that the mind does, you're safe. We talk about the mind clinging or the mind hanging on to things. Well, it doesn't have hands to cling. When it clings to something, it means it just keeps thinking about it over and over and over again. It keeps wanting it over and over and over again. And to let go of the clinging means that you just pull out of it. You let it stop. And the only way you can let it stop is to get out of it and see it simply as an event in the mind. The last time I went to visit with a John Suwat before he passed away, he commented that his brain was sending him all sorts of weird messages. And he'd learned that he'd had to put a question mark after everything he came into his mind. But he said, that thing I gained from the practice, he said, that hasn't gone away. That thing was the what enabled him to pull out of those messages in order to see them. This, they were strange, weird messages, but he didn't have to believe them. He had a foundation. So we didn't, even as the brain was wandering around with weird perceptions, he was sitting in a spot mentally where he didn't have to get involved. And that's what we're working on here. It's protection, a safe place to keep our awareness based. 
And that's worth all kinds of effort, all kinds of discouragement, all the things we have to go through in order to get there. Because the real sense of solidity, the real sense of safety that comes with that, it's more than you can imagine. You realize how long you've been wandering around, misled by your thoughts, and how totally deluded you were, and how much suffering there was. When you can step out, really step out, it's an enormous burden lifted. Both the sense of solidity in the present moment at that point, and the, the confidence that there's nothing can touch this because it's outside of space and time. As for what's going to happen inside of space and time, well, that's that's a matter of karma. Even awakened people have to age, grow ill, and die. But they found the part of the mind that doesn't age, doesn't grow ill, doesn't die. And how do they find it? By doing what we're doing right now. Every time a thought comes up, here's your chance. Are you going to fall for the thought, or are you going to step back from it? The thoughts may be crazy, and there may be things you don't want to think about, but as long as you're able to step back from them, you're in a good position. This place where you're stepping back may not be as totally solid as you're like, but it's heading you in the right direction. Because if you don't have this, you have no safety at all. There's no protection at all. No perspective at all. And without the perspective, there's no wisdom, there's no insight. And without insight, you're totally immersed in delusion. And what is it like to be totally deluded? You're totally unsure of things. Deep down inside, things don't seem quite right. And there's always that element of fear. As the Buddha said, as long as you don't know the true Dharma, there's always the fear of death. What's going to happen when you die? The only way you can know is by looking at the process of the mind, because it's actually going through death and birth on a small level all the time. It just keeps coming back, coming back, coming back. Whatever habitual patterns you've been encouraging in the mind, they just keep coming back again and again and again. But the fortunate thing, again, is that you can step back. This is what the Buddha's teachings on karma are all about. Not everything is determined in the mind. With every present moment, there's always the opportunity to make a new decision, to make a new choice. For most of us abandon that freedom and just keep going through the same old patterns over and over and over again. What's important is that we appreciate this ability to step back and get some perspective. pull ourselves out of these thought worlds. And no matter how fleeting it may seem as you're practicing, each time you do it, you're strengthening the skillful habit in the mind, the habit that actually is your path. Ajahn Mahabhava tells how when Ajahn Mun passed away, he was really hit with a sense of despair. What was he going to do with his life now, when things came up in his meditation? Who would he go to? He said he felt like a, someone who had been depending on a doctor for long years, and now the doctor was gone. It was like being a wild animal in the forest with no doctor at all. Then he remembered all, the, all those teachings he would gotten from a John Munn in the past. Those would have to be his teachers now. And what was the point that a John Munn stressed more than anything else? So whenever anything comes up in your mind that you're not sure about, just step back and stay with that sense of the knower, that sense of just basic awareness. 
no matter what, whatever there is in the mind will pass, and you'll be safe. It seems like such a little thing, just the sense of the watcher, the observer. But it can keep you safe. Because it's that faculty of the mind that can pull you out. And even when storms are blowing through the mind, okay, you're in a safe spot. You've got, ha you've got your haven right here. Just don't let yourself get pulled into the storms, because they can blow you all over the place. The Buddha once said, look at the animal world, see how variegated it is. All those many, many, many kinds of animals, all the different shapes they take, all the different ways they live. He said, the mind is more variegated than that. It can get itself into all kinds of fixes. But you've got your protection right here. It's right close to hand. It's closer than your eyes. Just learning how to appreciate it, learning how to value it. And even though it may seem unstable right now, keep coming back, coming back, coming back. Because if you don't, look what lies in store. If you do, you find that you're strengthening a very important habit. Each time you remember to come back doesn't go for naught. You're building a pathway in the mind. And when you come to meditate in a place like this, it's like you're You've got your, your mouth above water, and you're being able to pull out a little bit from the flood. That's what they call it, the flood, all these things that come pouring out of the mind. And if you're not careful, they can totally immerse you. You can drown. But here you've got your nose above water. You can breathe. It may not be the most stable position yet, but it says it can become your island. You've got your island in the flood here. And you may not have a big island, but it's big enough. And you find that as you develop, it opens up to even better things in the mind. Because without this sense of awareness, what would you have? You'd have nothing, nothing to hold on to at all. You'd be swept around in the storms that the mind cooks up. With this, though, you have hope. And it's not a far-off hope, it's something that's right here. All you have to do is learn how to value it. And it will open up and show you all that it has to offer, more than you can imagine. It's like one of those fairy tales where there's a, the ugly little gnome, who it turns out has gold hidden away. And the valuable things in life, many times, are the places where you'd least expect to find them. And they're closer to home than you might imagine. So keep this in mind. You've got gold right here, but it's covered up by dust and dirt. And the dust and the dirt can be cleared away. Because aside from this gold, otherwise you have nothing. With the gold you have everything. <laughs>